Sports ready to go on the fan. New York Sports Radio. Mike's on. Mike's on. To get you the sports any way that he can. It's Mike Francis on the fan. Sports Radio 66 and 101.9 FM. WFAN. From the studios of WFAN, this is Mike's on, Francesca on the fan on this uh, sizzling Monday. First time it really felt like summer this year. Uh, and it's just a couple of days away from the start of summer after the Father's Day weekend on this 18th. Short show today because we have the uh, resumption of the suspended game in Washington followed by the regular game. So we'll be with you just for 90 minutes. Yankee pregame at 4.30, Yankee game at 5. So you got the suspended game at 5. You heard Frazier up because Gaudy's on a bad leg. So you got Frazier up. Torres has to go back down. Numbers-wise, uh, they needed the extra outfielder for protection right now. They were short an outfielder. So Frazier's up and uh, Torres down uh, while Gaudy limps around. Uh, the Yankees couldn't be in better shape. I noticed some guys weren't hitting, but who cares? I mean, they can't win many more games than they're winning. You know, they're on a crazy pace right now. So, I mean, uh, you know, you can't expect everybody to be hitting at the same time. The stories, there's two. The second is the Mets, who had a very unlikely win. Just after the game, I went right to the Met game, just in time to see them give up a run, just in time to watch the last inning. I was just about uh, to, you know, tweet something sarcastic about the Mets when all of a sudden they made an incredible rally for them and won the game. So congrats to them. We'll get to them in a minute uh, as they at least have put together back-to-back wins off a very unlikely win for the Mets yesterday, down to their last strike, get a little help on a couple of bad decisions by by Arizona, and then uh, a couple of long balls, and they get themselves a really a big come-from-behind win, so a good win for them yesterday. Tonight in Colorado, it will be DeGrom, who, as I told you last week, you can hear all this stuff about the Mets trading pe- players. They are not trading DeGrom. I mean, uh, th- that comes from the horse's mouth. They're not trading DeGrom. They would have to get so much for DeGrom before they'd even consider it. They might make trades. They might send some guys packing. I think they'd like to send a bunch of guys packing. They did not want to send DeGrom packing. Um, and then, of course, the Yankees will have uh, Gray in the regular game. The suspended game will resume, as we said, at 5.05. The first story, of course, is the U.S. Open which left town uh, after a bizarre, and there's no other word, bizarre couple of days here out at Shinnecock. Uh, And the storyline was really threefold. It was the USGA, Phil Mickelson, and then the idea of having an event in New York because the New York galleries and crowds got mentioned a lot in the last couple of days. But the biggest story is the USGA, which messed everything up. I mean, listen, they went to work yesterday like a, you know, like a politician would to try and get a spin back in their favor after just completely destroying the event on Saturday. They did. I mean, they took a golf tournament and completely destroyed it. The course was completely out of control on Saturday afternoon where where else can you go from 45th to 1st? Okay? Because you catch the wind at the right time. Two guys went from Berger and for now went from 45th place to first place because of the fact they caught the weather right, put up a couple of 66s and sat back while everybody else went absolutely berserk. It was a bad decision by the USGA, which put the pins in the wrong place. The wind blew, which they knew it was going to. And the course dried out. It got crusty. It got crazy fast with the wind. You couldn't hit. Really, you weren't rewarded for good shots, no less bad shots. And the thing turned into a nightmare, which they turned the course around yesterday. They put it in a place where you could actually, you know, fire at flags for a good part of the day. They put a lot of them in very accessible places. That's why Fleetwood was flirting with history and wound up a guy I picked at 40 to 1. I had a guy in the clubhouse yesterday sitting there with a great chance to win at 40 to 1. I had another guy tied on the lead at 30 to 1. And didn't win either one. I had Reed and Fleetwood, and Kepka beats both of them because, you know what? He played great. I mean, there's no other word for it. He just played absolutely sensationally, and his putter was not a story. He took his putter out of it by just putting so many shots close to the flags that 
he didn't have to make, you know, he didn't put his putter or he, he didn't put his putting on display in any real way. He didn't have to make a whole lot of putts because he just hit fairways. When he didn't, he muscled the ball out. We know how strong he is. And then his iron play, his second shots were just sensational. Absolutely sensational all day. He deserved the win, a deserving win. And then, of course, you have uh, Phil Mickelson, which has become a topic. Well, it's Phil. What else is no? Phil is always in the center of everything. And here he was on Saturday in the center of everything from a standpoint of those who wanted to basically tar and feather him to those who wanted to give him a standing ovation for giving the USGA the back of his hand. And really, there's so much to this story because it's Phil. It's the USGA, which nobody likes. And there's a lot of gray area here because, let's be honest, do I believe that in the middle of a terrible round, in the middle of watching his dream of, you know, having a big Saturday after hanging around on Friday, staying around, and then just falling apart like everybody else on Saturday, and knowing that he was not going to get even a shot at his quest, which is to win a U.S. Open, which we know has been his quest for a very, very long time. Do I think he, at that moment, decided, oh, I've always wanted to do this. Let me do it. No. I think, without any question, what we saw, and Phil had a different answer by the time he finished his round because he had a lot of time to think about it. I thought what we saw was a guy out of contention, which is a big part of this. Would Phil have done that if he was in contention? No way. No chance. He was out of the tournament. Who cared if he was going to be plus 17 or plus 16 or plus 18? It made no difference. He was way out of the tournament. And what you saw was just a golfer who lost it. You saw frustration. You saw a guy who said, you know what, enough of this, blank, boom. That's what it was. It wasn't him saying, oh, there goes my ball rolling. I've always wanted to do this. Let me do it now. You know, his answer afterwards was nonsense. It was. He did it out of temper. He was angry. He was frustrated. How many times have you thrown a club? How many times have you banged a club into the turf? Everybody's done it who's played golf. This is his way of doing that. He's never been in love with the USGA. He's had his moments with them. But more than anything else, he was frustrated. Here was a putt that had just gotten away from him. Another putt that had just gotten away from him. He ran after it, smacked it. Should he have done it? No. Does he wish he didn't do it? As he said later that night, wasn't my best moment. Wasn't his best moment. Was it one that he had thought about and that's how he wanted to play the hole? Come on. I mean, really, his answer was a little silly. But the reaction afterwards was ridiculous. Here was a guy out of a tournament who lost his temper. Case closed. He didn't destroy the sport. He didn't destroy one of the great golfing careers in history. What did he do that damaged the game for any real length of time? Did he impact the championship? No. If he had been in contention and did that, he would have had to be disqualified because there would have been a real problem with what went on. He wasn't in contention. The only reason anybody paid attention to him at all was because he's Phil. Otherwise, someone else had done that. It would have been, oh, look what he'd done. Oh, disqualify him. Get it over with. Boom. And goodbye. They didn't disqualify Phil because he's Phil. Would they have disqualified us to play him? You know what? They probably would have, but there would have been no outcry for it because it was Phil Mickelson. But his answer compounded it because it made it seem like, oh, I've been waiting to do this to the USJ for all these years. Nonsense. I'm not saying he hadn't wanted to do something in protest to them at some point through the years, but Let's be honest. At that moment, as it happened, he was a guy running after a bad shot in anger. That's what it was. I've had enough of this. I'm done. Boom. Did he wish he didn't do it? Yes, he did it. He got his two-stroke penalty. We move on. It's not the end of the world. And this is where you always laugh at golf. The same people who have a problem if somebody in a gallery yells at a player, hey, these people pay their money. Once in a while, they're going to yell something. They do it at baseball players all the time. 
They do it in other sports all the time. This idea that you are in this cathedral when you are playing golf, that it's not only about competition or skill or anything like that. It's also about this higher level of being. Nonsense. It's a sport. And at the very best, it's a competition played by guys who have a high skill in their game. And we like watching it because it's exciting. And also to see guys play that at that level against that kind of competition and the course which becomes very much competition. But the idea that, you know, the world changes and, you know, Western civilization as we know it is damaged by that movement. I mean, people actually stating that Phil had ruined his career in a tournament where he was completely out of it on a Saturday afternoon when he took a two-stroke penalty, he ruined his career? I mean, maybe the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Do I think he should have been disqualified? No. Did I have a problem with him on Sunday, one putting in the green and putting his arms in the air? The only reason you saw it was because it was Phil. It wasn't Phil, you wouldn't even have seen it. That was him having a little fun. Who cares? He likes being in the spotlight. He always has. He likes being the center of attention, even in a tournament where he's way out of it. And let's be honest. You got everybody today running who the people who need the USGA are the only people who run and apologize for them. People who do business with them, people who need them, try to apologize for them. They screwed up. And what guys will tell me who are part of this sport on a daily basis. I'm not around the sport enough to talk about the USGA. But people I talk to say, hey, the USGA always screws it up. Nobody has any real regard for those guys. They walk around in their funny hats and decide, well, I'm put a pin in, put a pin in. You know, very self-important. Hey, nonsense. You know what? People don't go there to see the pin placement. They go there to see the golfers. Okay? To see the course, yes. And to see the competition, yes. But you know what? Sometimes you can overdo it. They overdid it. They screwed it up. Then they tried to fix it on Sunday. They messed up. Case closed. They did a terrible job. And Phil made a mistake. He did something in anger. He didn't admit to that. Afterwards, he said, hey, I always planned this. This was the best way to play the hole. No, it wasn't. It wasn't even the best way to play that hole if that was your decision making. So we know we didn't do that. He got angry. So what? How many people have gotten angry on a golf course? Did he throw a club and hit a kid? No. Did he do something that impacted somebody else? No. What he did was show some anger and frustration during a time when the course was out of control. So I think the penalty he received was apropos. I think the criticism he re received was utterly ridiculous. And I think anybody who's trying to bend over today and apologize for the USGA, get a grip. They had a horrible weekend. Wasn't a bad tournament on Sunday. They made it accessible. The wind didn't blow that much. You had Fleetwood shoot a 63. He really, if he had made two more putts, which he could have easily made, he could have shot a 61. He had a chance. He posted a score. Kepka was better. He deserved it. He was the best player. He won the tournament. It was a fun tournament to watch. Won a great tournament. It was a fun to watch. And let's be honest. It was a three-ring circus on Saturday. Made by the wind, but made also by the USGA overreaching. And then, of course, all the Phil stuff. And I'll get, we got guys who will call up now and tell us how golf as we know it has been shaken to its very roots by what Phil did. Get a grip. Back after this.